Minecraft is a complicated game, but hopefully this video will make it easier with 10 tips and tricks to make you go from noob to pro. Getting the enchanted books you want in Minecraft can be difficult. It's also frustrating because just trading with a librarian, you might get a stupid trade like let's say 45 emeralds for efficiency 3. But no worries because there's this awesome feature in Minecraft where if you break the lectern of the villager and then replace that lectern, it will instantly lose then instantly regain a trade. So for instance, now we have only 5 emeralds for aqua affinity which is a pretty good deal and you can simply repeat this over and over placing down the lectern and returning it if there's a large group of villagers here too a different villager may pick it every time like right here we have 13 emeralds for silk touch which is awesome to lock in the trade simply trade with the villager once so there's a little bit of experience here and it will never lose that trade even if you break the lectern it just needs that lectern to restock its trade you can even make this easier by digging down beneath where a villager is or pushing a villager into a small little hole like this. Multiple ones might even go in there. And then you can place down the lectern next to it down there and be able to flip through the trades really easily in a safe little area like this where the villagers cannot lose their trades. So we could see here what this villager got and if we don't like it we can break that lectern, pick it up, place it down again and keep cycling through here without any risk of that villager running away. And once we've found our villager that we like the trade of we can just block on top of here so that it's safe, maybe place a torch down there and eventually modify it into a nice place for the villager and maybe you can even zombify it one time to lower the prices. Bone meal is one of the most important resources in Minecraft and you want to make sure you have a good source of it. Especially if you're on a multiplayer server, the best source of bone meal is in the Soul Sand Valley. If you're just starting out on a world, I would suggest the second you're in the nether to find a Soul Sand Valley and break as many of these bone blocks as possible. As each bone block turns into nine bone meal, you can get yourself a vast supply of this super quick growing item, which will give you the ability to insta grow all your crops, which is also a nice way of progressing quicker through the game. And if you're on a multiplayer server, I would suggest doing this before a different player does. Just be aware of the ghasts in this biome as they're kind of dangerous, but you can always just hide behind the fossils and they will not know you're there. And you can break these bones safely and get yourself your massive supply of bone meal. When you get a fortune three item in Minecraft, and that of course could be anything from a golden hoe with fortune 3 you may find in a ruined portal all the way to an enchanted diamond pickaxe with fortune 3. That fortune 3 applies to a lot more than you probably think it does. So for instance breaking these sweet berry bushes with fortune 3 we can get many more sweet berries than you normally could. For instance right there we just got five sweet berries from one bush. Of course it does depend but your luck is especially amplified on things like wheat and potatoes. So upon breaking the one piece of wheat here, we gain three seeds. This one gives us four seeds. This one will give us four seeds as well. You can see here overall we're getting the maximum number of a lot of these. That piece of wheat literally just gave us six seeds. And as a crazy example as well, upon breaking these potatoes, this one potato gave us four, that one gave us six potatoes, that one gave us five, and that one just gave us, I think, six as well. And so you can see here you're getting large amounts more potatoes than you normally would. And it amplifies your crop yield by a lot. Better yet, this golden hoe has literally no durability gone on it. And so let's say you do find a golden enchanted fortune three hoe or something else like that in a ruined portal. Or even if you just have your diamond pickaxe, it can be used for a lot of different things. Just of course be aware that breaking most standard blocks doesn't make much of a difference. Although breaking gravel does. As with fortune three, every single piece of gravel does turn into flint. And there's many more uses of fortune three as well. The old growth pine taiga and the old growth spruce taiga biomes in Minecraft are well known for their large spruce trees, which give you an insanely large amount of the spruce log item. But you can get these on your own as well. If you have four spruce saplings from any spruce tree and you place them down like this, they can actually grow into one of those large taiga trees as well. We'll just turn our bone blocks we got from the soul sand valley into bone meal here and we can bone meal it or just wait for it to grow and you can see that will turn into one of these large mega taiga trees as well. There are certain shapes of the mega taiga trees that only generate in the giant spruce taiga but of the standard old growth taiga forest all these different variants can also be obtained by simply bone milling your saplings. It makes great Christmas trees too if you're in the festive season, and is certainly the most efficient way of getting wood in the game. And you can just mine a cork screw up the tree, and then dig all the way down without having to place any blocks to mine all this out either. You may sometimes see a well-established Minecraft player eat golden carrots as their main food source, but getting these is actually a lot easier than you would think, because you don't have to craft them at all. 
In fact, one good farmer villager will give you an infinite supply. Basically, if you just have a nice little pumpkin or melon farm, you can trade those with the farmer villager for emeralds at a pretty cheap price. In fact, with literally one zombification, it can be one pumpkin for an emerald or one melon for an emerald. Then for three emeralds, you can get three golden carrots. Or again, with only one zombification, one emerald for three golden carrots. Which means once you've traded with and cured a single farmer villager, you can turn one pumpkin or one melon into three golden carrots, giving you an infinite supply of easy food. Especially if you have an auto pumpkin or melon farm or even a manual one, this is definitely the best way to get yourself a lot of good food in the game. Getting an enchanting table in Minecraft isn't usually that difficult, but what is difficult is getting those 15 bookshelves to put around it. What I would suggest is not getting those bookshelves around it until you find the stronghold of your world. Simply make yourselves a couple eyes of ender, and once you find this stronghold and you know you will, when you throw another eye of ender and it will go downwards instead of upwards, then explore around the stronghold until you find the stronghold library, which every single stronghold I've ever been to has, and oftentimes there's usually two. And once you're here, you have all the bookshelves you'll ever need, even with the smaller size. You could even just place down your enchanting table and enchant things right like that. With most of the books around here, you can generally have a fully powered setup just by placing your table down here. But with a silk touch axe or even just some wood to recraft these, you can simply break these, move them around, and get your full enchantment set up much quicker, much easier, and without the need for a large cow farm early game. You've more than likely heard someone say that you should never dig straight down in Minecraft, and this is actually pretty bad advice. Now it is good advice if they're talking about digging straight down like this on a single block, just going all the way down here with no care of what's beneath you. But all you have to do to make digging straight down something that is safe and also very useful is to go between two different blocks and dig down two different blocks at a time. The reason why is let's say we're mining down and we suddenly stumble upon a cave, we're still on the other block and just hold shift, mine down between these two blocks. There's absolutely zero risk of going into lava, going into a cave or anything like that, because if you do run into one, you'll be stuck on the other block here and you can safely go back up out. What's also nice about this is let's say you're digging down to a strip mine, then you can put your ladder on one side and your water bucket on the other and you have a pre-mined out area. So for instance right here, let's say we had just run into lava, you'd still be safe here because we're on the other block. And same with the big drop. Dealing with a lot of mobs at night is dangerous, but it can be made much less so by simply having a shield. If you just have a shield in your offhand and hold down right click, there is basically no attack in the entire game that you cannot deflect. Anything from creeper explosions to zombie hits, shots from skeletons, even hits from spiders. Basically every single attack in the entire game can be deflected. Just be aware it cannot deflect multiple attacks at once, so you still can die. But in my opinion, I would say it's probably a better defense than full netherite armor if used correctly. Exploring in Minecraft is super fun, probably my favorite part of the game but it can be benefited a lot by using a seed finder. There's a lot of these online, the best being probably chunkbase.com, and you can put in your seed of your world in Bedrock Edition, Java Edition, even tons of old versions of the game will work on here, also large biome worlds, and you can find basically everything from mine shafts to biomes to pillager outposts to woodland mansions to end cities in the end, and of course you can use this to the level that you feel is correct. But in my opinion, at least for the biome map, it's a great way of having a better look into your world. Sort of like a rough sketch of what the world is like. So then when you're exploring, you can let's say find a jungle, know what the right direction is to go, and not waste too much time running around in circles, wasting time and potentially never even finding the biome you want. As of course Minecraft's world is so big, it's certainly possible to explore for hours and hours and hours and hours and never find what you want. Something you may not know about Minecraft is that mobs will not cross over rails. Now they can if they're pushed over the rails, but they will not manually try and cross them. So if you want to be safe from, let's say, baby zombies, zombies, really any mob that you don't want to be near to, then simply surround yourself in rails and they'll be completely confused and not know what to do. Occasionally they will push themselves over the edge, but if you want to quick defense and you do have some rails on you, this can be a great way of avoiding these pesky mobs. Especially if you're an abandoned mine shaft, you can just surround yourself in a little corner and that zombie won't be able to hit you. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed those 10 Minecraft tips and tricks to make you go from noob to pro more than these zombies did, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!